in terms of IP creators here, in, from a content point of view, what are the things, I mean, obviously, you know, games, but, but is there any subdivision within that that you, I mean, is it all about games, and are there any particular games that you think are really coming through? Yeah, so I think, you know, it's about knowing why you're trying to exploit the digital space. For some brands, it's purely about establishing your brand, brand reputation, it being noticed, cutting through in a very noisy environment. Um, and I think the history has been, traditionally we did program support because that's all we could yeah. do with these platforms. Then we started to do um, program enhancements where you might say, take the assets of a particular show and then make a game, which isn't completely related. I think you know, that's also now becoming incredibly saturated market fragmented, you know, there's not, you're not, a sh there, there's no shortage of choice. So now it becomes about then the quality of that experience. So you want a good game with a great, with a great brand. And it doesn't just have to be game. So I think that's where the experience bit becomes key. It's about, you know, marketeers will tell you what's the essence of your brand, but being able to then translate that into, and what does that mean on a different platform? I think what's going to, what's interesting is the next stage is transmedia is about taking the sort of the essence of the, the story experience and putting it on these different platforms where it can coexist. I think the interesting next thing is where all of our devices in the future will all just talk to each other. Karen, you, you have the possibly slightly unenviable task of shepherding the Ardman crown jewels away from linear platforms and into horrible digital spaces where people can do things to them. Just talk to us a little bit about, for example, with the, the Sean game you made. How did that work? Um, it, yeah, it, it really is hard. It was very hard in the beginning when, you know, you had the directors creating animations that take two seconds, you know, uh, a day to make, basically, or the other way around. Um, but, you know, they, they've got a very different language than what, what we speak in, in digital speak, basically. Um, so it's, I think, first of all, it was finding that common language between somebody that actually is handcrafting stuff and us talking about digital stuff and online games. So what we did is make sure that the directors of Sean the Sheep, for example, in this case, Collie, um, would be, we, we set him behind the computer and say, you've got to play these games and you've got to understand how, you know, how the audience kind of goes through that narrative mm. uh, in that sense. And then, so now we want to make a game. How do you tell your story of Sean the Sheep through this game? Mm. And make sure that the, the level of humor is still there because that's why the kids love Sean the Sheep because yeah. that humor. Um, so we need to make sure that that is then translated properly to that platform that we use it on. So, Helen, talk to us a bit about that. Just talk to me a bit about that conversation which says you've had a hit book, you know, you, you think you know what you know, it works, you're not, you know, maybe looking for any advice or coaching. How does that conversation open up called here's a, here's a possibility, not a problem? Well, I, well, I think a lot of it is about trust. And I think if your author and your illustrator trusts you as a publisher or a developer or whatever you are and understands the vision and what you're trying to do with that brand, I think that then helps. But I think the reality is that, you know, it just isn't for everybody. I mean, there are just some people that are more than happy to have their extremely successful books and um, they don't want to go into another space. They really, really don't. So we've been very careful at Walker to work with, sometimes I have to admit, it's some of the younger sort of authors and illustrators that just absolutely understand that they have to be in this space for the future. But um, it can be a difficult conversation, absolutely. And I think all you can do is work together very much on it, experiment a little bit, but guide them very gently and very, very carefully. Mm. And there are other authors that are up there doing it and yeah. are doing amazing things on their own and actually in part of the whole sort of PR communication piece, they're doing it. They're online all the time, they're blogging, they're, they're connecting, they're in all, you know, they're, they're really part of the kind of sort of communities. And in a way, they're doing it. So um, it's a real mixed bunch, to mm. be honest. It's a mixed bag. And Jamie, I mean, Jamie, you've translated linear brands into interactive spaces. You said to me, oh, yes, I'm really thinking about flow. And I just was really interested in that. I was like, oh, flow, interesting. So just, let's just, could you just explain to the good folks at home what you mean by flow? Okay. And what, the, you know, what that means in terms of taking a linear property in. So flow is a theory um, by a psychologist called Mikhaili Csikszentmihalyi, uh, who is a very sensitive and wonderful man. And he has analyzed the feelings that we have 
um, when we are performing at an optimum level, that feeling that you have when you're doing something that you're really competent at, and, and, but you're, you're, you're being challenged, but you're just sort of riding that wave of being just perfectly competent at it, such that you forget everything, uh, time, space, uh, you're completely absorbed in what you're doing. And in games, to me, that, that's the core feeling that you want to create uh, in a player to, to, to allow them to have, which comes through your design and how you, how you implement that design such that everything feels very smooth and they're constantly being challenged at the very sort of edge of their competence, but sort of getting, getting better uh, at it. And that's different from um, narrative. And to me, story in games is not very interesting. How does television and MTV in particular avoid a sea of empty desks and a bunch of new entrants partying outside your door? Very good question, actually. <laughs> um, actually, uh, two major things are different from the music industry. One major thing is that we are used, in many markets, we used to deliver free content, which is ad-based. So we are used to have something offering without getting money instantly back from the audience. The second thing is that we've been virtual all the day through. So uh, since decades, uh, television has been a virtual product. So we are used not to distribute on a physical level. So this is the good thing. The bad thing, of course, is that, especially for a young target group, which we are addressing, um, they are all digital natives, so we have to act really fast. The, the content we have, we serve it the best way across all the market, because when we launched, for example, I have the example of South Park Studios, um, dot com. Uh, it was a web, it's a website where you can basically watch all the videos ever, ever made uh, uh, with the characters of South Park for free. It's just an app-based model. And everybody was saying in the beginning, come on, if you give them for free, I mean, they, and, and add ads to it, they will go somewhere else. But it's not true, because we deliver them the, the best usability. So we, what we deliver them is a good karma. It's fair, because, I mean, this is the official site. It's high quality. Uh, the website is performing well. It's fast. We have a community. It's a forum. And now, by all these extra additional factors uh, which we contribute just on a normal website the people feel at home so all these other forms where South Park content was uh, delivered by a web including uh, YouTube is has gone down because they have found a, a, a nice home. Ilya to th the last word the, the your business is built around your customers isn't it I mean yes, how do you deal with the customers uh, in the website? Yeah. In the website, uh, now, uh, uh, when I, uh, uh, everyone can uh, uh, register to our website and everyone can play uh, anytime uh, uh, they want. Uh, and uh, they can uh, make uh, bonus, uh, but they, uh, they uh, can uh, play in different games, and they also can see all video on uh, with uh, mm. our series, of course. Uh, but if they want made something special, uh, uh, for example, special house, special dressing, uh, they don't pay for this. They pay only for sub subscription uh, yeah. after this. Yes, uh, yeah. and uh, uh, about uh, now about 15% of our auditory uh, pay, and another one uh, play f play free.